AI voice convert in DaVinci Resolve. This is a fun one. Uh, I wasn't originally going to do a video on this because when I first tried it, I thought, eh, I'm not sure if I'm ever going to use that. Well, I did. <laughs> in fact, I used it last week. So here is the original audio that I recorded last week. DaVinci Resolve recently did a pretty significant update, and there's a different way of doing it, so what I did before doesn't now look familiar. So what had happened was, between bad uh, one, a bad take and the final take, I had taken the mic off, set it down, went and got some coffee, and when I came back, I didn't put the mic back on. I left it on the table. The level looked fine, uh, and I don't usually monitor through the headphones when I'm recording. And this is the result. It's a very live room, um, so there's a lot of background sound. However, this is the video that I delivered. The video was all recently. You said pretty significant update, and it was a different way of doing it, so what I did before to now look familiar. How did I do that? Well, it's voice convert, which is using an AI tool to take your existing voice and replace it with a different voice. So let me show you that. And there's one thing you have to do to get uh, set up on voice convert, which only works in the studio version of Resolve. So you go to the extra downloads manager in the Resolve menu, and you have to download AI voice training and the language setup. Um, I've already downloaded it, so I have trash buttons here, but if you haven't downloaded it, there'll be download buttons. Uh, and now that I have voice convert, let's have a little bit of fun. So let's first go ahead and go to voice convert with that file selected. And I am going to use one of the built-in voices. Uh, let's say mail two. We'll leave the settings at default. We're going to render it to a new track. So I don't cover up the working tracks that I have here. And it will analyze. Now this all happens on your computer. All of, I think all of Blackmagic Design's AI stuff is on board. So it's not offloading to the cloud somewhere. There's no security involved. So it has automatically disabled my original track and enabled the new track down here. So let's hear it. Did you resolve recently? It is a pretty significant update and it was a different way of doing it. So what I did before to now look familiar. So that works, obviously it's not my voice, but hey, you know, that is pretty fantastic. But I don't want to replace it with somebody else's voice. I want to replace it with my voice. And so <laughs> we have to actually train the AI to know your voice. And the way you do that, like you grab a, an audio file or a, a, a video file. That, and what I did is I took my, uh, I used to record on this microphone all the time, which I don't quite so much anymore because I'm on the road a lot. Um, so I went back and I, I went to the videos that I recorded with that. And I fed those videos into the AI training using this. So if you click on a file or select many files and you go to AI tools, DaVinci AI voice training, it's going to come up with this warning the first time you do it. And this is important. Don't train the AI on somebody's voice that you do not have permission to use. If you end up doing that, you can get sued. Don't do it. Just don't. Um, you have to have permission to use a voice, which you don't have permission to use my voice unless you are my editor. So let's give it a name. Test, Chris. Training accuracy, I don't know why you would ever choose faster, but we'll choose better. And then it says that this is 10 minutes long. It recommends that you give it five minutes. And anyway, let's just go ahead and hit start. It will do its thing and I'm gonna cancel it because I've actually already done this process. Now let's go back to our voice here and we're going to convert the original audio using one of the three models that I made. Now I made several because I didn't like them the way they sounded. But I originally trained it on a bunch of videos that I thought sounded really good, but those videos had been treated with compression and EQ and that kind of stuff. And uh, pretty heavily treated. I mean, it sounded good to my ear, but it's a final product. Um, and that's actually not the way you're supposed to do this. You're supposed to train it with raw audio and then do the treatment later on your voice converted file. But there's some options here. I'm going to leave it at default and go ahead and render it to a new track. Actually, I'll reuse audio for since I deleted that one. And it doesn't take that long for a short file. Now, have a listen. To me, this is, I don't know if it's my training of the AI voice or what, but it doesn't sound very good. It sounds kind of lifeless to me. Did you resolve recently? This is a pretty significant update, 
And there's a different way of doing it. So what I did before, I'm now look familiar. All right, that's not too bad. In this phrase, it's not too bad. But what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to delete that and re-enable the original one and do another voice convert and start playing around with these settings. So tight matching of source means that it's going to vary with your voice. So if you talk high and then you go low, it's going to follow that as closely as it can. What I found sometimes worked better was turning it up a little bit. I think I went with 1.4 on this eventually. Because I, I, know, I know my own voice, and that one didn't sound like me quite so much. So I'm just going to turn that up and try it again. Now, these are the actual settings that I, I ended up using, I believe. So let's hear that sound. W2 is all recently. This is a pretty significant update. And there's a different way of doing it. So what I did before, I'm not a little familiar. Now, the tricky part is... You have to actually know your own voice fairly well to kind of massage those settings a little bit. To me, that ended up sounding the best. Um, so that's what I used. And I was never actually intending to use this. Uh, I was just exploring a new feature, and I had put it to the side and said, okay, well, this is... It's not a gimmick. It's actually amazing. I, I um, One of the things I had thought of using it for is doing voiceovers for a documentary. Let's say I want to have different voices. Uh, I can actually do the voiceover myself for a trial run and then put a female voice on it. Did I try that yet? Oh yeah, let's try that. Go back to voice convert here. And uh, we'll choose like female voice too. I'm gonna put back type matching because these well done models actually track better than my custom models. And I think that's because of the quality of what I put in. What I should do is set up this guy and just do a recording session at some point and then see how that goes. But I, as I said, I wasn't intending to use this. I was just checking out the feature and then it saved my butt. <laughs> so I figured I'd pass that on. All right. So here is what I would sound like if I was a female. Divigy was all recently did a pretty significant update and it was a different way of doing it. So what I did before them now look familiar. Anyway. It's a tool that's available in the studio version, and if you're a content creator where you do this kind of setup regularly, or you're on the road and uh, you're doing, well, in this case, as I was, uh, you're on your road and you're, you're not always to have real close control over your audio, you can do the best you can, and if it doesn't work, you can use AI Voice Convert, if you have the model set up in advance. So that's a quick look at that. I hope you found it helpful. Um, I surprisingly did. Uh, we'll catch you next time.